If there is one thing that I noticed while making this video, it's that the developers really cared for this game. While I was gathering all the facts and glitches to show off, I couldn't help but admire just how many engrossing details and enthralling elements that I came across. This spin-off has more passion and effort than some of the mainline games, and yet most of us would just shove it off to the side. So today, I'm gonna give this game some well-deserved recognition. Here are some neat things from Sonic and the Black Knight. Let's start this off with what I think is the most mind-blowing thing about this game. After beating a mission, we will be sent to this screen here. Depending on how we perform, we'll determine if we are given a title. These are represented by little emblems that appear on our card. Showing chivalry gives us a silver and gold emblem, while being a horrible person gives us a red and black one. These aren't just for show, by the way. According to Ring Rush in his 100% completion run, I'll put the link to the video in the description, they are, in fact, score multipliers. Having three positive titles on our card will multiply our score by 1.3, and I can assume three negative titles will multiply our score by 0.7. Not only that, these titles have a direct effect on one of our abilities, Crest of the King. With three good titles on our card, it will allow us to give rings to the townspeople by walking up to them. However, if we have a bad title on our card, it straight up won't work. In case you're not getting all of this, um... There is a f***ing morality system in this game. How many of us actually knew this? I, I sure as heck didn't. Another tidbit on Crest of the King, if the ability is taking effect, little music notes will come out of the villager, almost as if it's singing. Aw, that's adorable. Let's talk about another ability, Attack Step. If we tap A, Sonic will leap forwards. If we were to swing the Wiimote during this action, we will attack, obviously. Now let's take a look at Sonic's pose at the end. Doesn't it look a little similar to the pose on the Sonic Adventure cover? It might just be a coincidence, but then again, there is a lot of fan service in this game, so who knows? Upon entering the blacksmith shop, we are given four options. Choosing status will pull down a chalkboard. If we look very closely, there is a split second where a piece of chalk bounces off the board onto the floor. It took me until editing this video to notice that. I, uh, I also found a couple of other things while editing. In most Sonic games, after we get hit, our character will flicker in and out of existence. But in this instance, for absolutely no reason, the Hedgehog and the Sword flicker at two different speeds. If we choose the mission where we fight Sir Percival, a short cutscene will play right before the battle. Once it ends, there is a single frame where Sonic is... T-posing? I think it's definitely not his normal stance, so I suppose I'll call it a T-pose. One of the main ways to increase our score is by interacting with fairies. If we get closer to them, we can see that they have the face of a chow. Aw, that's cute. Ooh, that reminds me. Let's play a quick little game. Fairies come in a multitude of colors. How many colors can they appear in? I'll give y'all a couple of seconds. You can pause the video if you want to. Alrighty, if you chose number six, you are incorrect! Aw oh, man, you hate to see it. The answer we were looking for is number seven. Let's list all of them down. We have yellow, which gives us rings. Red fills up the soul gauge. Light blue acts as a dash panel. Blue behaves like a spring. Green are used for the hide-and-seek missions, and purple launches us across the level. The color I'm sure most of us missed, and I don't blame y'all, I literally just found this last night by complete accident, is white. Yeah, uh, apparently they only appear in Misty Lake. Also, uh, white fairies are the only ones that do not affect our score, they are purely just there for show. Completing missions will grant us items. What we can obtain is dependent on the level and the mission we play. A couple of them stood out to me, and I even learned a few things from reading them. Like violets represent modesty, and amethyst represent faithfulness. Some of their descriptions were so fascinating that I went out of my way to do research on them. Like the daisy's name is derived from the pearl. Daisy was originally a nickname for Margaret, which came from the Greek word margarites, meaning pearl. The sword, Thraigo, bears a dragon's name. 
This word is Welsh for red dragon. Interestingly, a red dragon is on the Wales national flag. It's a very prominent symbol over there. Carnations are given to mothers on Mother's Day because, I'm gonna nutshell this terribly, a mother and her daughter had a garden full of white carnations and they brought about 500 of them to their church and advised all the mothers to take one for themselves. Fun fact, white carnations honor a mother who has passed away while pink ones are for mothers who are still living. We also have a few references like the Big the Cat mask. Ah yes, we can never get enough of Big the Cat. The seven world rings from Sonic and the Secret Rings are here too. Collecting all of them will unlock a rock and roll cover of Seven Rings in Hand, composed by Crush40. There's also some silly ones in here, uh, burnt bread is something we can get, but it's classified as a mineral? Sh sure I found Donut to be the funniest, uh, the crown of human achievement. I am screaming. We also have the Bat's Fang, which... is that... is that blood? In my Sonic game? A good chunk of the levels feature some wild animals. Anyone who's played the game will know that, but I just thought it was too cool not to mention. Even though they don't do anything, I love their inclusion. They add a sense of liveliness to the environment. It's a, it's a really nice touch. I wish more Sonic games would do that. Some examples include rabbits in Titanic Plains, crows in Camelot Castle, chickens in Deep Woods, and lizards will appear in multiple levels. Wait, 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 go back, go back. Sonic is officially standing next to a realistic chicken. The music that plays in Molten Mine is not an original composition. It's actually a remix of the action theme from Black Dawn. Have a listen. Funny thing, this same song was used in Knockout King 2000 during the training mode. I'm not joking, <laughs> look it up. Go to the first mission of Dragon's Lair and play as Gawain. After the second checkpoint, we will have our first electric wire that we must run across. At the corner of the third and fourth zigzag, jump and use the glide. We will come across an invisible wall, and as we can see, gliding will ever so slightly move us upwards. Doing this continuously will get us to eventually fly over the barrier and out of bounds. If we continue to stay above the level geometry, Gawain will drift into the dark void of nothingness. Most of us have probably forgotten this move. While executing Soul Surge, if we shake the nunchuck instead of the Wiimote, Sonic will kick whatever he's locked onto. In the King Arthur rematch, the only way to deal damage to him is by jumping, pressing B, and moving the Wiimote. So, you want to see what happens if we decide to move the nunchuck? Speaking of King Arthur, if we fail the quick time events in his first fight, some special dialogue will come out. This is where we separate the knights from the knaves. A knight who has not mastered his sword is no knight at all. Uh, I wish I didn't have to use this dang sword! Listen, take care of the situation at hand, and you can complain all you want later. There's something wrong, knight from another world. You seem rather weak for someone summoned to help. I had really hoped for more time to train you. Yeah? Well, I'd hope for a better sword! I actually did not know about this, uh, Scardy Fluff, I hope I pronounced that correctly, suggested this to me. Thank you very much. Really, hearing them go at each other's throats made my day. There's also another thing I didn't actually find by myself, um, I just so happened to come across a video made by Mittens HD7, and after watching it, I was like, oh yeah, this definitely needs to be in the video. So, um, shout out. Choose a mission where we fight one of the Knights of the Round Table. Jump over them, then immediately as we land, jump backwards and hold down on the analog stick. Normally, the camera would pan around when the boss is behind us to put them back on screen, but for whatever reason, doing this prevents the game from doing that. Yes, this works for all three of them, and don't worry, letting go of the stick turns everything back to normal. 
One of my favorite parts about the storybook games are the illustrated cutscenes. Rather than being animated in a typical sense, they convey motion with some gorgeous stylized 2D stills, kinda giving it a moving comic book feel. They aren't really worried about lip syncing these, although there is one time where they sorta try to lip sync. The very first time Caliburn talks, his mouth is opening and closing as a simple way to show, well, he is a talking sword. Next, we're gonna look at some stuff in the multiplayer. For those who don't know, there are two knights that are not in the main story, but are playable in this mode, Sir Lamerick and Sir Galahad. All of their voice clips were recycled from earlier games. Lamerick's lines were taken directly from Riders and Zero Gravity, while Galahad's came from 06. No way I'm gonna lose! No way I'm gonna lose! That was easy! That was easy! Lamerick, the blacksmith, and Amy all have their own unique noise for when they jump. These jumping sound effects are also from other Sonic games. Lamerick fittingly takes his from the Riders games. The blacksmith uses the one from Adventure 2. And Amy has the one from the classic era. On the subject of leaping about, King Arthur is the only character who cannot jump. Pressing A will instead make him laugh, which is just incredible. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening carefully, you might think this song in the background sounds familiar. That's because all of the multiplayer stages use music from previous entries. Misty Lake uses Egg Fleet from Heroes, Camelot Castle uses Quick Race from Heroes, Deep Woods uses Green Forest from Adventure 2, Great Megalith uses Bullet Station from Heroes, Crystal Cave uses Sky Deck from Adventure 1, The Cauldron uses Emerald Challenge from Heroes, and Camelot Castle's Rooftop Garden uses Battle Sea Area from Heroes. What the heck, five of them are from Heroes. One last thing before we move on, Lamerick, Percival, and Blades each have a double jump. Jump into the air with A, then, just as we land, press A again. If our timing was right, we should be performing the double jump on the ground. Finally, we're gonna end this video off with an incredibly useful piece of trivia. Sonic Adventure started off a small trend where an original vocal track is used in the final boss battle. This continued for about 11 years until mysteriously stopping in 2009. Sonic and the Black Knight was the last game in the series to do this, and it was like this for a very long time. It wasn't until the most recent game, as of this video's release, Sonic Frontiers, for them to revisit this idea. An entire 13 years later. I know, this one's cheating, but it's still interesting. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please continue to have an exquisite day. Also, I'm about to show you my outro. Uh, I worked incredibly hard on it, so, um, I... I hope you enjoyed that as well.